Hi everybody, Martin at Flick and Feathers again today and I'm tying the Jingler. It's a Scottish dry fly that works fantastically um, for the early, especially early season, March browns, large dark olives, but it'll also serve you later in the year for things like the brook duns when they're coming off. It's a very good fly. It looks a bit rough, it's a bit scruffy, but it's an absolute killer. It really is. You should definitely have them in your box if you fish the rivers. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel. Get access to the monthly fly tying classes, as well as being entered into the giveaways. Alternatively, you can hit that like button, watch all the, the video all the way through, that all helps the channel. So I've got my hook and my vise. This is a size 12 Camazan B170, so it's like a, a medium wire hook. Um, you can use a dry fly hook if you want, but I like that slightly stouter hook on this. Um, and I've started here some rusted on uni in 8O, but you can use brown or olive or whatever you like. And I'm running the thread along the shank and I'm holding my tag end of the thread down towards myself because I'm going to use this for the rib but I want it out the way when I tie in the tail right, so I've got my rib on my side and below tail material is up to you really um, you can just use hackle fibres if you want most people nowadays probably use cock de leon and I'm going to use cock de leon like a medium part though it's a nice fibre um, nice colour and it's got a nice sort of degree of stiffness for the dry fly tails. So I've got six or seven fibres here. If it's eight, it doesn't matter, it's fine. I'm going to measure them, I want them about a shank length, maybe slightly more. I'll just untangle that. for these and wrap it onto the bear hook I'll we'll take a turn under and I'll come up and I'll spread that tail really nicely which helps obviously to carry the weight of the fly right, we'll just cut this length of the body and you want to leave yourself a good nearly a third of the hook shank for your hackled area right so the body's got to stop about here now for my body I'm using hairs hairs for I'm just making a wee mix off of the the mask as I pluck it I'm only tying a few of these obviously if you were tying up a large batch you would do a quantity and I'm going to dub a fairly rough body as I say it's no a it's, it's no a nice looking fly the jingler although it looks very good when it's hanging in a fish's mouth but it'll certainly not win any prizes for beauty contests so I'll just use my bare thread to get myself back to the tail, start dubbing this. And don't be too fussy. Just get that dubbed on. It can be quite rough and it looks quite heavy there. But I'm going to come in and counter wrap this with the tag end of the thread which will tighten things up. You can have a good half a dozen or seven, seven turns up the body and cross your thread, take a turn on the hook to lock it. Do that a couple of times. Yeah, you've got that wee buggy. 
you know, you've still got the, the guard hair sticking out, but the, the centre of the body is nice and tight now. Hackle comes from a cheap cape, right? It's a Chinese, just a red game Chinese hackle. You don't want to be using high quality genetics for a jingler. It just it works. The fly does work better with cheap hackles. The cheap hackle, the feather barbs vary in length up up the stem, so you get a sort of different effect, leggy effect, buggy effect, and it just lends itself to this pattern very well. So I've tied this in with a curved face, curved side facing forward. I'm just going to take my hackle pliers and wind it. One, I'm just going to sort of use up this hackle. They're not very big, so you want to just basically use the whole thing. And I don't mind if the fibres are a wee bit long either. These are sort of on the edge of what people would say was proportionate. But actually, again, I think sometimes having a slightly longer hackle fibre on these makes a better fishing fly. So just tie that off. Snap away the tip. And then I'm ready for my second hackle, which is going to be a small, a smallish brown partridge feather. And again, if you've got a feather that looks a wee bit rough, sometimes they're quite good on these. And you can be long, long in the, in the fibre length. So, I've just got to take my hackle pliers and expose the tip. That's fine. I'll come in and I'll tie this in. Again, concave side facing forward. Right, I want the, the natural curve going towards the eye. It's not a wet fly where it would be curving back. And then it's just the same again, just use this until you've got enough. And don't be shy. There's something about these soft hackle fibres in the dry fly that seems to make it very, very effective. And I mean, you can tie these in a 10 and they work good for the, the Danicas as well, with a cream body. I just broke that stem, but I can catch it because I didn't let go of the, the hackle there. Got away with it. it. Sometimes the stem's quite soft in the partridge, so you might have noticed that I was, I was holding with my finger, which allowed me to get away with that there. If I, was, if I wasn't holding it, I would have had to get a new hackle and tied it in. So I'll just whip finish this behind. And there you go, that's the jingler. It's, as I say, rough, but it's some fish catcher. It really is, it's very, very effective and well worth having in your box. So I hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it, if you did. Remember to hit the like button, and I'll see you for another video.